If you are interested in wholesaling or flipping real estate, then this video is going to be a deep dive to help you figure out how to calculate the ARV, find comps for your property, and overall determine your offer price when you're trying to wholesale or flip a house. What's up guys and welcome back. If you haven't been here before, my name is Lily, and this channel is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. Today, I'm going to show you guys the process that I've started to develop over the last month or so to how I'm calculating ARV, finding comps, and making offers. Now, I started my investing journey by house hacking and duplex, but I've moved on to wholesaling as a way to build up enough capital and experience to just build my knowledge and, you know, become a full-fledged real estate investor. So I'm showing you guys what I'm learning as I'm learning it. And if you appreciate just a real inside look into what it's like to get started, please turn that like button blue and also go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss future content. Today, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I calculate the ARV, find comps, and get to a rehab budget. And I'm going to do that by using two services. The first one is PropStream and the second one is Redfin. If you don't have PropStream yet, you can use the link in my description to get a seven day free trial. And if you decide to use that link and actually purchase the program, then I will get a cut of that. So thank you for the support. You can also use Redfin to find your comps and figure out your ARV. But since Redfin isn't in every market and at least everyone has access to the seven day free trial of PropStream, so you can do this, I'm going to start off there. I'm going to record my screen. We're actually going to use the example of a property that I'm super interested in. Let me just come to Redfin first, even though I'm gonna jump back over to PropStream, just cause I wanna show you guys the listing for this property. There aren't any interior pictures up on the MLS, um, and there are a couple of reasons for that, but basically this property caught my interest because it's for sale for $70 a square foot, and it should, in this neighborhood, if it was like, like a modern fixed up house, go for somewhere between like 90 and 100 something, which is something we're gonna figure out today. But it piqued my interest for that reason. And also because in the description, let's see. Yeah, it says home needs TLC and is being sold as is. So that just tells me that this is like an investor special. This is something that somebody's gonna have to purchase and do some work on it. So that's what piqued my interest. And also it went under contract like a few weeks ago and I got an email alert that the price had been dropped by $30,000. So I called the real estate agent super quick and that same day she went to the house and did a FaceTime tour with me. So I'll put some video of the FaceTime tour up here for you guys so you can see what that was like. But basically, I'm super interested in this house because even though it's for sale for 250000 that might seem like a super high number, but I think the resale price is actually going to be a lot higher than that, maybe in the 300 some things, maybe even in the 400s. So that's what we're going to determine today. This is the property. But I want to go back to PropStream, and we're going to search it up here first. Once I get to the property, I come over to Details, and the first thing I want to do is I want to hit mortgage, mortgage, Mortgage Transaction History. And what's interesting on this one is it's not actually showing me what the amount of the loan is. And there could be a couple reasons for that, but since I've talked to the agent, I know that in this particular case, the woman who owned this house left the house to, um, maybe not her children, but just like some close family members who had been taking care of her, she left the house to them, to them, yeah, in her will. And so there wasn't a mortgage on the house because she had paid it off. And so in 2018, they became the owners of it, but they didn't pay for it. They didn't like take out a loan to get it, which is why there's no amount here. But if there was a mortgage on the property, you could tell what the amount was using PropStream. And that's super useful because you might want to make an offer that's say, you know, $100,000 for a property. But if the person who's selling it owes $120,000, they're not going to be able to take your offer and actually have that be a bank approved sale. And so there are a lot of more advanced, complicated things that you could do in that, that situation, but it's just good to know and have that information from PropStream. So what I want to do now, which is what you guys came here for, is go to the Comparables and Nearby Listings tab. So they have this green is the public record and the blue is MLS. And so the difference is that even though the public record, like your county, records every sale that happens. So this is going to show cash transactions. This is going to show off-market deals. It's going to show everything. Unlike the MLS, where that's not going to show off market, that's not going to show um, transactions that didn't happen through a real estate agent. But the MLS is updated much more frequently because real estate agents are constantly putting properties on the market, taking them off. Whereas the public record, your county might be behind two or three months. And so I like to actually click both. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me every property. It's going to give me both the public record um, file and then also the MLS file. And so some of them are gonna be doubled up and that's fine, but there's gonna be some that only have the public record and there's gonna be some that only have the MLS and that way I make sure that I see everything. And so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna come over and I wanna change the date to the last six months. I can either just type it in up there or I can do it right here. 
uh, with the arrows, right? So I'm going from March 12th to September 12th. Our property is a four bedroom, two and a half bathroom for 30, 3,500 square feet. And so what I want to do once I have like the kind of last six months, after I do the last six months, the first thing I do is I come up and I hit this pencil in the top left hand corner and I want to mark off the outer bounds of this neighborhood. And this is a great question to ask the real estate agent is where should I be running comps for this property? And because I, I've talked to the agent, I drove through this neighborhood, I know that kind of like this corner half of the square mile right here, you can see that there's like a creek that runs and separates this half from this half. And then I don't want to cross any major streets, so I'm not going to cross these major roads right here. But this corner, like, what is this? This half of this square, this triangle, is um, basically where there's going to be similar homes for sale that I want to be comparing my property to. Now, I'm not looking for homes that are in the same condition as mine. This one is outdated, it needs repairs, it needs a new roof, it needs some yard work done. So I'm not trying to look for properties in that same condition. I'm trying to look for properties that have been fixed up, that are in really good condition, that if I was to sell this to an investor, I could say, hey look, if you go put 20, 30, 40, thousand dollars into this property you could sell it for this much and we'll talk about how you get that rehab budget but your mindset is okay what are the nicer flipped houses going for in this neighborhood so the first thing i kind of like to do is scroll over and see what the sales amounts are and also what the price per square foot is so we know that our property is for sale for 70 dollars per square foot i can come over here and i can see okay there was a sale for three hundred and seven thousand. that was 75 dollars per square foot this one sold for 330, that was 91. Oh, this one sold for 360, that's 119, 118, 150, 117, 162, 163. So now my mind is like, yo, this property is for sale for $70 per square foot. There are stuff in this neighborhood going upwards of 150, 160. Can ours go for that much? I don't know yet, but this is my first thought and this is why I just wanna get a snapshot of what's happening in this area. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide to go and look at the pictures for some of these properties. The good thing about PropStream is that the number one property is closest to the one you're searching, the one you're comparing it to, and then the last one is the furthest away. So if you just start at the top, I can see, okay, this property sold for 307. Let me hit the, the photo. All right, so I would say this is actually a property that's pre-flip, meaning it's not in like the updated condition. Somebody might have purchased this with the intention to flip it. Now, I mean, somebody might have purchased this just to live in it themselves as well. I don't know that, but I know this isn't like HGTV, granite countertops, all that good stuff yet, right? So that's a property in my head that's not the nicest, nicest. So I'm actually gonna uncheck it, right? And because this is a double up, because I have both selected, I like to uncheck both, right? So now I'm looking at this next one. This one sold for 330. Go to the pictures. Again, not super updated, not super HGTV, just a little bit outdated property, right? Obviously in livable condition, but I mean like the blue carpet, the green carpet, this is obviously a dated house. So in my mind, I'm saying uncheck, this is not a flipped nice house, right? So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna start looking for what are those nice flipped houses. Here's one that sold for 360. All right, so now these look like some professional pictures, like it's got the wide angle lens. The property is empty. I see granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, right? And I'm not going through like every single little picture, but this property is more updated. This has some, some work has been done to this property. Another thing I see is that there's a pool here, so it probably sold for a little more, but I'm gonna leave this one checked so that I know just the MLS one. So because there's a double up, I'm gonna leave the blue MLS one. I just like the MLS better. Um, so I'm gonna leave that one checked and I'm gonna go into the next one. Now, if I'm just looking at a property to get a quick idea of if it's a good deal, I may not go through every single property on this list. I would just say, okay, what's the highest, what's the lowest, maybe I'll take an average. But because I'm actually going to make a serious offer on this house, I had the agent go through and walk through for me. Like, this is a property that I want. I want this deal, I wanna wholesale it. I'm gonna dive in and really get a good idea of what's going on in the neighborhood. And I think, especially if you're new to wholesaling, it only makes sense to learn as much as you could about the different neighborhoods around you because that's part of your job, right? Like, as a wholesaler, you've gotta know property values. So take the time to go through and check everything out, all right? 
So I'm going to go through now and just see what properties I think have been flipped and I'm going to keep those checked off and I'll show you guys why in a moment. Here's another one with professional photos. This is some very nice tile flooring, right? It's got the beams. I definitely think that this should go a beautiful big kitchen. I definitely think this is going to go in our flipped category. So that one's going to stay checked. That was the 365 sale. Also another very nice flipped professional photos. This one even has some furniture in there. I think this is probably staging. Maybe somebody was living in here. I don't know. Yeah, maybe somebody was living in here. This one also has a pool. Another thing I forgot to tell you guys is that when I see a property, before I check it off, I do like to come and come over and see, okay, this is the three bedroom, three bathroom, 3,000 square feet. If you don't want all of the properties in the area showing up, you can kind of change the square footage minimum and maximum. So ours is 3,500. So I'm actually going to change this to say 3,000 as my top and I'm going to say 4,000 as my top. Right? And what that does is that gives me uh, the 11 properties that are within that range. So I'm going to go through again and look at my flips. That one had not been flipped. This 360 is a flip. This one sold for 365. That is a flip. All right, here we go. Now, this one that's 505, it's a three bedroom, three bath, 3,300 square foot. It's over $505,000. And it's smaller than the property we're looking at. And this is a high end flip granite nice countertops just like a very grand house i mean look at that headboard right so that sold for 505 so i'm definitely going to keep that up there let's see all right so here's one that is not recorded by the public record yet because it just sold on august 27th right just a couple of days ago and so the county hasn't recorded it yet but it is showing up on the mls and because there's no pictures from prop stream those are the ones that i just like to open up Type in a Zillow. Oftentimes Zillow still has the pictures. This one doesn't, but I can see this sold for 400,000. So my best guess is that it's a flip. I can also scroll down and see if there's a, um, a description. So yeah, it says that this house was beautifully remodeled, kitchen, master bedroom, bathroom, new carpet, tile, blah, 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 blah. So yes, this one is staying on my list as a flip. Even though I couldn't see the pictures, I can read the description and obviously know that it's a flip. And then I see this next one for 589. Let's see. Oh man, super nice. I love this door, I love this artwork. Definitely a flip. Staging, like who just has three random bottles like popping bottles on their countertop at any time of day? No, this is a professionally staged house. This is all fake furniture. No one leaves their table made like that or a table set up, whatever you call it. All right, but this is a beautiful house. I love this sink. Oh man, this is a beautiful house. This is a professionally flipped house, right? So now, I've got, let's see, I selected one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna take off this one. Five houses in this area that are similar size, similar bedroom, bathroom, makeup, sold within the last six months that are professional flips. This is the perfect area for what I'm looking for. And so what I can do is first I come up here to save comps and I hit okay. That's gonna add it to my you know amount of saved properties that I have. And then once I save it, I can come up here to actions and view comp report. And this is one reason that I really, really like PropStream is because everything that I just selected, it's gonna put into a report for me. So it talks about the property that we're discussing, but then when I scroll down, it also shows me all of the comps. So this is, the orange is our property. The blue ones are the ones that we're talking about so that we can see that they're very close. We have the list of all of those addresses right here. And then we actually have all the information about those properties, square footage, you know, what they sold for, the dates that they sold. And then we also have all some pictures from those listings, right? So just kind of pulled all that data and put it into a comp report for us. I like to create this from PropStream because if I can get this property under contract, then I can take this nice, beautiful comp report and send it to my cash buyers and show them, hey, this is what you might be able to do with the property if you were to fix it up and sell it for this much to help justify my asking price, right? Another thing that we can look at is that at the top right here, it's showing us that the average sale price for these five properties that I have selected 
is $443,000 and that the price per square foot was $133. Right there, that's showing me the exacts from five properties that have been fully flipped in the area in the last six months. So in my head, I'm thinking like 130, right? 130 might be my price per square foot resale. And if I type, just do 130 times 35.58, that's 462. I'm like, this property is for sale for 250, but might be able to be flipped for 462, right? And so that's my first thought. That's how I come up with that number using PropStream. Now, if you don't have PropStream and you do have Redfin in your market, I can do the exact same thing. And I'll run through that really quick for you guys. I like to copy and paste the listing, right? And so I have the same listing in two windows. And then I'm actually gonna scroll down and I'm gonna come to this top right corner and hit the square with the arrows. And then the bottom left-hand corner, I hit map nearby homes for sale. What this does is it brings me to that same listing, but it shows me the map version. And so I can kind of zoom out and I'm seeing the exact same thing that I was seeing on PropStream where I have that same square mile cut off by the uh, the creek. And so I wanna do the same thing on PropStream or on Redfin. I come down here, I hit draw, and then I'm gonna draw out the same area. All right, so that it's only searching in this area. And now, right now, it's showing me all the houses for sale. And that can be useful to look at too, but what I really wanna do is I wanna go up to more filters and I wanna hit sold in the last six months. So now I'm looking at the exact same data that I was looking at from PropStream. And the beautiful thing about Redfin, and unfortunately you can't do this on Zillow, is that you can sort super easily. So if I hit price and the arrow's going up, that's showing me from the bottom to the top. If I hit price and the arrow's going down, that's showing me from the top to the bottom. So I can see that the most expensive house in this area was sold for 589, and that the least expensive was sold for 143. And if I look at the least expensive, I can just see right away that it says, add your personal touches, which to me says like, come update this house, right? Cause it has yellow countertops in the kitchen and polka dot wallpaper, all right? But if I'm looking at the most expensive ones, because remember I'm looking for houses that have already been flipped, I don't see the pictures for 2666, but I can cross reference that with PropStream. Do I have 2666 yet? Yeah. And here's, here it is, PropStream has that same property, but PropStream actually has the pictures, unlike Redfin, and that's the one that we saw that was just super nice, right? So that was this one right here. Um, so this is why I kind of like to use both because I like to cross-reference and just see, oh, is there a property that PropStream has that Redfin doesn't or Redfin has and PropStream doesn't? So I can look at the next one, which is 505, so for 505,000, beautiful, been flipped, right? This one we saw, or wait, maybe we didn't see this one. This is 5909. Do we see this one? Ah, for some reason we didn't see this one on PropStream. So that's the thing, like different places are gonna have different properties and different data. And so it's just useful to, I think, look in multiple places because this sold on August 3rd, it's a super recent sale and it's definitely been updated. Even if I was to look at this description, it says extensive lists of updates and features, beautiful natural hardwood floors, and I'm sure many, many other things that they did to this property, right? So I'm looking again, this one sold for $163 a square foot. So we can sort by price, but we can also sort by square footage going from the top 172, 163, 163, 162, 150, 149, right? Where PropStream was telling us that the average is 133, right? So average is 133 for those five houses that we found. And then we can also cross-reference and just see what's going on on in my head, I have 130, maybe even if I want to be conservative, 120, $125 per square foot as the resale value for this house. So even if I was just to say 125, I would be able to re or an investor would be able to resell this house for about $445,000, right? And we can see that that is pretty supported by the neighborhood. Here's a 589, here's a 505, here's a 480 here's a 400, right? So if we could be somewhere right in this bunch, here's even a 390. If we could be somewhere in that bunch, let's say 435 to 445, I think that would be a safe projection. So even if I'm being conservative with my numbers and I have like 435, maybe 440 as a reasonable price that this home could resell for, I've got that written down, 435, let's call it 440. Now I need to know what is the 70% rule? And so a lot of investors use the 70% rule to determine what they can pay for a property before they fix it up. And so the 70% rule would be, four what are we saying? 440 times 70%, right? And that's gonna tell me 308,000, right? So I do the 70% rule, 
440 times 70 percent equals 308 and then from there i subtract repairs now i'm not a contractor i don't know if you're a contractor and know how much a rehab on this type of house would cost but basically i just used some information that i got from the flipping mastery tv youtube channel that i also checked with some local investors that i've been talking with to see if it was accurate and they confirmed that it was a pretty good estimate and for a property of this size i'll put up a chart so you guys can see what i'm talking about but for a property of this size he says that the rehab would probably be for for a medium rehab where we're redoing the flooring, the paint, the kitchens, the bathrooms, maybe a couple of other things, but it's not like a full gut like we have to tear the house down. It would probably cost somewhere between fifty five and sixty five thousand dollars. So let's call it sixty, right? So I've got my four forty times seventy percent minus sixty thousand dollars of repairs. Right, so now I'm at $248,000, which would be what I could offer, and this house is for sale for $249. But the problem with that is that as a wholesaler, I haven't taken a fee yet to actually get paid to wholesale this house and to bring it to an investor. And so I do my 70% minus repairs minus my wholesale fee. So let's say I wanna make $10,000 on this deal. And so that would leave me offering somewhere around 238 maybe starting off at like $230,000 for this property. So deal or no deal? Let me know in the comments what you guys think and I will keep you updated either on my Instagram or on my website at LiliInvest on Instagram, LiliInvest.com. I'll keep you updated what offer price I make and if it gets accepted or not. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I post videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And until next time, check out this video right here or this one right here. I'll see you guys next time.